He healed because he was moved with compassion towards the sick and the suffering. It says, Now a leper came to him, imploring him, kneeling down to him, and saying to him, in other words, begging him, If you are willing, you can make me clean. He wasn't sure if Jesus was willing. He was convinced of his power because obviously he had heard about some of the miracles that Jesus had did or had done. And he was convinced that Jesus had the power to do it, but he wasn't convinced, wasn't sure if he was willing. And so he comes and he falls down before him begging, imploring, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus moved with compassion. The Greek word is a very long word. Something like splank nizomai. <laughs> and it means to yearn inwardly. It means to be deeply moved from within. To yearn deeply in your inward being. Now this is interesting because a leper was a grotesque looking creature. Leper, leprosy was a terrible disease that ate away people's parts of their body and their noses were missing and their ears and faces. And, and, and because the disease were contagious, they were quarantined. They had to live apart from their family and their loved ones. They were ostracized and isolated. If they were traveling along a public road, a highway, and they were meeting people, they were required by law to begin to cry out, unclean, unclean, so that people would make a wide berth around them. And so, here a leper was a person, an outcast, who was an ugly creature and who had, maybe some of them for years, had not felt the touch of a normal human being, not felt the touch of compassion, of caring, or love. And it's interesting, when this leper came and knelt down before Jesus, Something in Jesus broke. There was a, a yearning and a deep moving within. And he did something that maybe this leper had not experienced in years. He experienced a touch from a well human being. Jesus reached out and touched him. And it was a touch of compassion. Oh, folks... I have seen, been in healing meetings where it was conducted like an assembly line. It was conducted mechanically like an assembly line. There was no compassion. May God bring back a compassion into His church and into His people. And when we see God's compassion flowing like, like, it's, like uh, Mark is describing here, we will see healings. We will see miraculous healings take place. And Jesus was moved. There was a yearning, a deep yearning and stirring and moving deep within. And he reached out and touched him. He said, I am willing. Be cleansed. And immediately, he was cleansed from his leprosy. Wow. Oh, my God, bring his right back his compassion to his church. And when that compassion stirs and is flowing, that's a good um, sign, if you like. It's a good manifestation of the Spirit. Yes. That's a real manifestation of the Spirit. And an indication and that flow. healing is flowing. Yeah, it's direction. Follow the compassion. Follow the compassion. Good point, So Follow the compassion. Matthew 14, 14 says, And when Jesus went out, He saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion. Something down inside of him, a deep yearning, broke forth of compassion and caring and pity for the multitudes. And the healing began to flow, for it says, and he healed their sin. I remember John G. Lake telling about, I believe he was in Africa. And he said there was a Methodist preacher. He had, I think, ten sons and several daughters. Just my sense of reading it, that the man was probably up maybe close to 70 or so. 
And, but he physically was a strong man, but he came down, uh, and what, uh, with, I believe it was tuberculosis. And he only, he weighed, he, he was a large man, large frame, but he wasted away. And finally he was totally bed fast. And uh, was just skin and bones, could hardly turn over in the bed. And uh, he had been prayed for, nothing had happened. And John G. Lake said he went there and he decided with a determination he was not going to leave the man's bedside till they had some kind of a breakthrough. And he said that he had been there by the man's bedside in prayer, praying for the man, seeking God, praying for healing with no results. He said one of his associates came and stood over the man and prayed in the power of the Spirit. said, you could sense God's presence and power and he prayed, but said nothing happened. And he'd been there for over 14 hours and he said as he was standing there by the man's bed, the passage that we read earlier in Matthew chapter 8, that himself, not somebody else, he didn't, somebody else to try to do the hard work for him, he himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. And John G. Lake said, he was standing there by the man's bed thinking on that passage that had come to his mind. Himself, Jesus Himself, God Himself in the person of Jesus, on the cross took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. He said, as we think about just something, he, the way he described something on the inside of him, he said, broke. And he said, there was such a deep yearning and compassion for the sick man lying on the bed. And such a compassionate love, he said he just reached down and picked him up and held him in his arms for a few moments and laid him back down on the bed. Didn't say a word. And said when he laid him down on the bed, he was completely healed. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, I think of the old song. When nothing else could help, <laughs> love lifted me. Folks, a legalistic, and I hope you don't take me wrong on this, I believe in a doctrine of healing, but a legalistic, formulaic doctrine of healing will not bring what is needed. Oh, it's got to be that personal, that dynamic, the love of Christ working through us for a sick and dying world. And may God tonight by His Spirit, bring forth a renewed compassion for the sick, the suffering, and the dying of this world, that His compassion will break forth in us and through us. Amen. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted. What was the motive of Jesus in healing? Was He trying to be a popular person, a powerful person, and having a big ministry? No, He was genuinely moved with compassion for the sick and the suffering. And oh, tonight, let, let's, let's just pause, let's ask God right now, every one of us, that God will make us channels of His compassion. That the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, He says in His Word, Paul laid out this it's a metaphorical image of us being the body of Christ, but it's the picture that, that Jesus Christ, He works through us by His Spirit. Lord, I pray that you will, make, you will make us, make me, Lord, a channel of your compassion as never before. And Lord, I pray all of our friends that were gathered together tonight, God, I know that as your compassion is channel through us. Lord, we will see divine healings take place because you're still a God of compassion and caring. So let your love, let that agape love, that compassion break forth through your people.